Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of What Not To Miss With Chris. In the latest release of the LMI, or the Logistics Managers Index, a pattern of stagnation became apparent as there's been very little change in the overall number in the past four months. Now the index has barely shifted more than one point over that time period, and is currently sitting at a reading of 56.4, which is 5.4 points below the all-time average of 61.8. Now some of the biggest shifts this month include inventory levels, warehouse capacity, and transportation transportation capacity with both warehousing and transportation expanding at a faster rate and inventory levels moving into expansion territory from contraction for the first time since April. Interestingly enough, the difference between upstream, which represents raw materials still requiring some level of manufacturing, and downstream, which are finished goods closer to the end user, they had a significant spread between the two, with upstream inventory levels in expansion territory at 59.4 and downstream in contraction at 46.4. Now, one thought as to why this may be and how it also relates to the growth seen in both warehouse capacity and transportation capacity is the explosion of imports we've seen over the past couple of months. Now, according to the NRS Global Port Tracker, they estimate TEU imports increased by 22.1% in August and will increase by 19.2% in September on a year-over-year -year basis. In addition, they believe the West Coast import market share has risen above 50% for the first time in over three years. Now, this increase may be related to importers pulling orders forward in fear of a potential ILA strike at the end of September, which would affect both East and Gulf Coast ports. Perhaps the potential of another trade war is causing upstream supply chains to bulk up inventories, or maybe it's the early signs of inflation subsiding and the slight possibility of a rate cut or two in the near future coming before the end of the year. Or honestly, maybe it's a combination of all of the above mixed in with a consumer that somehow continues to show spending resistance resilience as we inch closer and closer to the holiday season. Whatever the cause, the difference between the upstream and downstream sentiment and where the majority of these imports are landing has a substantial impact on freight flows. For example, throughout July and August, imports on a year-over-year -year basis have grown significantly, with the majority of market shares on West Coast ports such as LA and Long Beach, which have also seen a noticeable increase in intermodal demand. Now, three years ago, when the West Coast import market share was also also above 50%, truckload rejection rates coming out of the LAX market were around 20% as opposed to only 4.3% currently. Even though the volumes are more than 70% higher now than they were back then in 2021, the fact that available truckload capacity in theory has increased by 79% and loaded outbound rail volumes are increasing at a greater pace than truckload volumes, that tells me that the time sensitivity of the goods needed right now are low, which correlates well with upstream inventory building. Now, if we move into the fourth quarter and warehouse and transportation capacity downstream start to slow down or contract, I'd imagine we'd start to see transportation prices expand as the time sensitivity need will surpass what long haul rail options are capable of offering. Well, that'll do it for today. Thanks for checking out another episode of What Not to Miss with Chris. Catch you next time.